Welcome to another David and Chuck show here on Thursday, the 21st of September. Chuck, September's flying by. Welcome, my friend. Oh, year is. Yeah, welcome. Uh, thank you. Uh, nice to see you. Hope you're nice well. Nice to see you. And my goodness, I think we both uh, frazzled. We both had frazzled, frazzled days today. Yeah, awesome. Uh, I'm for me. Oh, and- my goodness. Got like, yeah, dealing with uh, internet, dealing with websites dealing with all sorts of stuff that, that just, you know, whoo, just wearing you out. But, uh, anyway, uh, a really good show, uh, had planned on possibly doing my side of it from the JV game against Franklin over at CE Weatherby, but there's no way that was going to happen because when we get off the air around eight 30, I'm still going to be here for another four or five hours tonight trying to get all this stuff taken care of. So uh, anyway, uh, Chuck, before we get started, uh, I didn't say anything about it the other night because I just wanted to make sure I talked to a couple of of, of people that, that I uh, res- like and respect and, and uh, uh and also I want to make sure you and I had a, a little conversation and you, you sent me uh, uh, your text about what, about this uh, about 25, 30 minutes ago, and we were on the same page. So uh, Waynesville, Tuscola Athletics, Haywood County, uh, uh, Indiana University uh, has lost a, a good one, uh, lost a giant in uh, – uh, Marty Clark. Uh, Marty passed away from cancer uh, about uh, what five days ago or so, and we just you know didn't say much, didn't want to say anything about it Tuesday night until I talked to uh, to, to a couple of folks. So uh, uh, I know you got a, I've got the bio, but I'm gonna go ahead if if you if you got it in front of you. No, I don't have the bio, but, you know, I, I, I knew of Marty uh, through John Truitt, uh, Patrick Pardon. Uh, they went up, uh, a number Jimmy of people Erickson. went up to Indiana, Bloomington, Indiana, for the, you know, to bury him today at 12. They were there for the viewing on uh, Wednesday, and then they were, um, uh, then they, they buried him at 12. Marty originally was going to plan to be buried here in Haywood County. But the Indiana University has a very special location for very prominent Indiana University people. And they and because he is such a giant that they told him that they would uh, they were wanting him to be buried uh, yeah. on campus and in a special cemetery. And he lo- he thought that was special. So that's exactly what happened today is that they buried him on that in that special cemetery. Uh, Marty was a giant, and if you ever know, of, you know people that know Marty Clark is one is probably one of the most magnificent men that you'd ever meet, or you hear stories about because you never hear bad stories. You know, you you know this person, even though you don't, is they tell you the stories about him. They think enough of him to tell stories, and to show you what kind of giant he was in in athletics. Is Marty graduated from Tuscola, uh, bel- uh, believe it was 89. He graduated from Western Carolina University. He graduated he from West- Tuscola in 84. 84, very good. That's yes. why um, he was 84, and then it might have been Western in 89. But anyhow, yeah. the um, the fact is, is that uh, he was at some kind of convention where Nike meets people to be Nike reps, you know. You see the Nike swoop or Adidas or who, you know, are you Adidas program or that type of thing? And Western was up there trying to get Nike to uh, be their representative. And Nike was sitting there just listening to the Western Carolina rep talk. He said, well, you know, maybe we could do football or or basketball. And he was hee-hawing around and trying to, you know, he was lost for words. And the rep just sitting there looking at him. And there were a number of people in this area, and he and then he said, "Well, we'll you know, so you we'll do it, we'll we'll do it." And he said, "Well, maybe we'll just do basketball then." And he looked, "Stop, Nike will be your rep, full rep, Nike." 
He said, the reason is, is if Marty Clark says you're good enough to be a Nike rep, that's all I need to hear. That's it. He went to bat for Western and told him, you got to be their rep. And these other schools were like, who's Marty Clark and how do we get to know him? You know, <laughs> I mean, he just, he was a giant, but yeah. They, the people that went up there, you can talk about it with Patrick Pardon when you see him at games taking pictures, and you can John Truitt. They were very close, close enough to where they're, you know, they were up there the last three days uh, for his funeral and his viewing and that. Yeah. So, so, and and uh, one of the things Jimmy uh, Arrington came by here uh, the other day, but they were headed up because uh, he was in hospice. And they were headed up to see him, and he stopped by here, and uh, uh, they, they took uh, one of the uh, those floppy hats, those white floppy Tuscola football hats, and took it up to him. And uh, it meant a lot to them to be able to take that to him. To him. And, and uh, man, you know, he, he wasn't here re- recently, but he loved his program. He loved his school, uh, loved his community, yes. and uh, he will be missed. And uh, – for, the, for his friends that he grew up with, uh, uh, not only are our thoughts and prayers with Marty and his family, but they're with you. And uh, so uh, uh, the Mountaineers uh, have a pretty good section up there rooting for them tomorrow night. And they got somebody that that uh, bleeds uh, uh, black and yellow up there. So uh, uh, God rest his soul. That's a fact. And, uh, yeah. So uh, – Want to make sure real quickly, uh, Crontonado, uh, that's me, 1256 Delwood Road, Crontonado.com. Our great friends at Orchard Coffee, 39 Depot Street. Chuck, I had, I'm not, again, I really never drank coffee. I had two cups today. Two cups of Orchard Coffee in Sutton and Sun Antiques. They've got a board up there at 3156 Delwood Road. They've got a board in there, Chuck, that is from like 73 or 4. And, and uh, it's, it's got the football helmets broken down by division from, from every team back then in the NFL. And those are the things, you know, that we used to, to, to fight over. And uh, I, I think I'm going to go up. Matter of fact, I know I'm going to go up there and I'm going to negotiate. He's got a set price, but we're going to have to negotiate and uh, uh, see if we can't have that. I'd like to have that because uh, I'm getting up this, my little studio at home so I don't have to stay down here at the office all the time. And I'd like to have that on my bookshelf behind me to taunt you with because I know we both we, we both miss the old days. And, the, you, know, you know, I walked 17 miles to school in the snow up a mountain and with I, no jacket or shoes. And our kids don't believe us. We oh. are telling it may not be 17. It may be 12 and a half. <laughs> but we did walk to school. Well, I did. Uh, I, I lived at 15 Kirby Place in Asheville, North Carolina. And to walk to Johnston School, Johnson Elementary School on Johnson Boulevard, took me about a minute and a half. I would walk through Mrs. and Mr. Dale's yard, through the woods, through the front yard of Calvary Baptist Church, and then I was at school. So, yes, I did walk to school, but it was a minute and a half. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, uh, Marty will be missed. And I, I just want to make sure that, that we hadn't forgot that, and we want to thank our sponsors. And uh, Friday night, uh, Pisgah is open. And... Uh, uh, I'm sure they're healing up if they've had anything and getting ready. And, and I know Ch- coach chapel uh, will have them ready for their next opponent. And uh, again, we never think ahead, but today's the 21st and October the 13th is coming quick. That'll be fun. Mm-hmm. That'll be fun. And, and hopefully I'm, you know, and I'm not putting any pressure on you when I say this, hopefully uh, you'll be here. And if you know that, that we, cause we will, uh, we will have a ball, whatever. I know that, uh, you know, uh, I will be up not this Friday, but next Friday to watch Piskin Franklin play. Um, I've already told Chad and them that I will be coming up for that. And then um, if I'm planning it right, the 13th, Friday the 13th, we want to come up 
uh, early in the day and then uh, be there for the the big game at Tuscola. So, um, you know, I'll, I'll be able to catch all the Haywood County teams uh, and watch. Uh, well, you know, you do have a hat and you do have a shirt. <laughs> I'm not wearing it. <laughs> you do have a hat. You got a, you got a good looking hat too. You don't have just a hat. You got the hat that people are trying to fight over. Right. I have Man. that hat in a prominent place, and but I'm telling you, I got peeps on the other side of the county. I love. <laughs> I get it. Okay. <laughs> but you know, tough poopy. Yeah. Tough poo poo. I know. So. Uh, <laughs> Uh, are you going to be here that Saturday morning? I, I have to check with Angie, you know, with Angie. Because if you are, then we'll all be in the studio together for Jonathan Crompton show. Right, right. That'll be fun. But I'll all let right. the people. All right. Let's 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 start with this because this won't take long to analyze. And we did it Tuesday night. Uh, and, and it, you know, it is what it is. Is uh, East Henderson at West Henderson. Uh, it could get ugly. It could get ugly in a, in a hurry. I'm wondering exactly what West Henderson is thinking right now, because a team that's uh, averaging around 50 points, allowing 50 points or more per game, and they can score, they have been scoring more than 50 points a game. So you got one can score 50, one that's allowing 50. And you want to be, you know, when it comes, we we don't kick high school kids when they're down. But, no. you know, you have it right there. It's, it's 0 and 1 and 0 and 5 overall versus a team that's 5 and 0 and, and 1 and 0 in the conference. But it's really nothing to analyze here. Uh, it's at West Tennyson. It is going to be an ugly football game. Um, you know, and, and backups and kids maybe from the JVs will be able to play because I'm sure they're not going to want to try and run up the score. Yeah. What is that powerful of a team? North at Smokey. You know, I sat there and I was going through my analysis and I sent you a text and, you know, North Tennyson coming in on the road. And I asked you, I said, you know, do you know amongst the Mountain 7 teams who has the strongest, by far the strongest uh, op- you know, record, the opponent records, strength of schedule? And I said, it will surprise you. And the team is Smoky Mountain. Has the strongest opponent schedule to date where their opponent's records are 19 and 3. That's 863 percentage. They have played everybody tough, and they have been playing tough teams tough. And I thought North Tennyson because, you know, they were they were hungry. They're the sleeper in the conference. Well, I'm going to tell you something. I've changed my pick because of that. These kids know how to play against tough competition. They're close, and I think Smoky Mountain wins this football game because they have been – a very, you know, they have been groomed since the start of the season playing against tough competition. 19 and three overall record amongst their opponents' combined record. That's impressive. It is. The Mountaineers and the Panthers, 7 30 at the pit out in Franklin. 7 30 at the pit. And I got thinking about all the, you know, Tuscola's got to decide what to stop and, and all this stuff. And then I got to thinking about that over the last two days since we've been off the air. You know, Franklin's got to figure out how to stop Tuscola's offense. You know, they cannot, you know, I know the Brooks brothers are really great coaches, but they got to figure out who they're going to stop on the offensive side. Is it going to be Jed in the running? Is it going to be the, you know, uh, Jonas Howard, the running back? Are they going to stop that? They're going to stop the run? Or are they going to take the top, you know, close down the top, put a roof over the secondary and say nobody gets behind us. We'll let everything play in front of us. There's a lot of things. They got to play because they can't come up there and think we're just going to play standard defense and that Jonathan's not going to be able to call the plays because he's got the trigger man out there and he's got dominant receivers tall and he's got playmakers in the backfield and he's got a heck of an offensive line. So Franklin's in the same boat. 
that Tuscola is on the defensive side. They got to figure out, you know, pick their poison and figure out what they're going to stop and what they're going to let them, you know, let them go handle. And I think, but in the end, I just think the offense uh, at Tuscola is too, you know, is stronger. And I think they win a, a close football game. Um, and this will kick them off the first game in the conference. They'll go one and zero, and I, you know, three and two overall. So I think that's what I'm I'm feeling on that as that you know they've had a lot to work on, healed up, uh, got the bye you know the open week I say bye week it's not a bye week it's an open week, and um, I think they're just going to be charged up down at the pit and I think they're going to come away with a victory. And uh, any other any other Western North Carolina. High school football information teams. Anything you you want to discuss? Yeah, it's, you know your uh, Buncombe County schools are. There's really no, um, you know, marquee game being played. So you're going to see some big scores coming out of that conference. Swain County's going up to Madison. Um, you know, so it's not really uh, a week where you got so many marquee games like uh, Tuscola and uh franklin that to me may be the marquee game in western north carolina well that that didn't take long in your analysis the you and again you changed the pick and i and that's good uh it's it's fun to see that uh, when when you change your mind uh i i think that uh that that uh, Smoky North game is going to be kind of what you talk about. Right. Uh, the West Henderson North Henderson game, or uh, the East Henderson West Henderson game, is just going to be, you know, it's going to be ugly quickly. Uh, and in the conference, uh, the, the game that people are going to want to see is is out in Franklin. And uh, I'm, we're so looking forward to getting out there tomorrow. Uh, we 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 need. Folks uh, from from Waynesville, Haywood County, whoever, if you're a Mountaineer fan, we need you out there. That's a tough place to play, and uh, uh, it's a you know, and, and so get out here and support this team, support this program. Let's see if you can beat me out there because it was hilarious. Janet was uh, getting a lot straightened out a little bit ago, and I said, "Hey, I got to run over here. I got to get something to drink real quick before the show starts. I've had a long day." And when I, she said, I'll wait for you. And I pulled back in the parking lot about five minutes before we went on the air. And she goes, so what time are we leaving tomorrow? And I said, oh, what, are you, what are you thinking? She said, four? Yeah. I, said, I don't know. That's a little late, don't you think? So I'll probably be out there by four o'clock uh, uh, looking for a seat that nobody else is going to sit in. And, uh, and uh, I'll, I'm, you know, I'll beat you all out there. Brooke and Brian, I will beat you out there. Uh, well, I wish I could go, but you know, I've got a lifetime ban of making county, so I don't out there at all. <laughs> That's it. That's it. And again, I uh, want to thank our sponsors, uh, Cromptonado Mart. Hey, listen, if you get a chance, go to Cromptonado.com and look at my brand new website. Uh, I'll have all the pictures up by 10 o'clock in the morning because I can do it easy and quickly now. And uh, it, it's a better product. It's easier to get through. Uh, take a minute and, and look at our inventory. I am loaded with inventory. I got over 45 vehicles down here right now. I got trucks, SUVs, little ones, big ones, small ones, red ones, yellow ones, uh, all-wheel drives, four-wheel drives, front-wheel drives, four-cylinders, six-cylinders, eight-cylinders. Got a ton of of stuff good credit bad credit no credit cash and when you see the prices on the website uh don't have sticker shock uh it is what it is but man i like to negotiate so it, it, so you know call me let's have a conversation our friends up at orchard coffee honestly uh for a guy that was never a coffee guy i am a believer and I know that that you, Jonathan, definitely is. And and I know that the Blue Mountain Roast, that you love the Blue Mountain Roast, uh, the Blue Ridge mo, uh, Roast, excuse me, the Blue Ridge most, uh, Roast that you're drinking down there in Winston. 
and I'm going to go ask them for uh, some different things because I know there was a couple more that you wanted to try on top of that. Well, that you can order it on their website and have it shipped to you. And I want to try because it sounds so good. Is the El, Mon- El De Monte, uh the Reds coffee? That sounded so good, and I I, I really want to try that. Those are things that I, the the taste that you get from that coffee is uh, something that I want to try. So just, and you can look, there's several things that, you know, I'm not a decaf uh, coffee drinker. So, I mean, you know, I, I'll never get decaf. So, yeah. you know, you can order it on through the mail. Then we have another sponsor. Yes. Sutton and Sons Antique and man alive. What a cool, cool place. If you get a chance, go up and see them, uh, go, go to the website, Call them on the telephone. You'll see everything scrolling here at the bottom uh, right here. Let's even do that. Sutton and Sons Antiques, 3156 Dalewood Road. And if, if, if you're looking for the unique thing, go see them. They've got an airplane uh, 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 body out there. I've, I've, uh, it's really cool. It's, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, and, I, and I'm a, uh, I love to study those type of things, I believe that is a, Cessna 172 or a Cessna 150 uh, that, that's sitting out there in the front. Uh, but man, inside, Chuck, they got some really cool things. They're really good people. They love this program. They absolutely love this program. They love this football program. They love the, the school in, in the community. So please support these people. Didn't you People go in and mention the show, the Sutton and Sons Antiques will give them a 5% discount on anything that, no, did, did you tell me that? No, I didn't. I didn't. Uh, I'm going I'm to do this. What is that? What is that? <laughs> it's like Homer Simpson backing into the shrubbery. But 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 please visit our friends at these sponsors uh, that sponsor this. And uh, we got room for two more. And I have been contacted by several people, but uh, look, it's just like anything else. When they go, hey man, we're going to come by that car. That's great, but nothing's done till it's done. So if you want to get on board, let's go. Let's get down here. Let's get it done, and we'll make it easy, and we'll get you going. Because a lot of people, I'm shocked at the amount of people that that have watched what we do on all our different platforms and all the different places that we're able to do this now. Uh, marquee games, college football, Chucky. Marquee games. Yeah, we got uh, we got quite six games of ranked versus ranked teams out there. You know, starting at noon. Well, not uh, there is a marquee game at noon, and that's Florida State at Clemson. And uh, but the the rank well, versus well, stop, 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 stop. Florida State at Clemson. Right. Florida State's the favorite, if I'm not mistaken. By two. By two. They're playing in, in Death Valley. Yes. Uh, Clemson is not what they were. Right. Uh, but you're playing in Death Valley. Right. And even though it's an ACC school, it's an SEC environment, I know you hate when I say that, but you know what? Tough. That's the truth. It is what it is. It is an SEC environment down in Clemson, South Carolina. Uh, something's still off kilter to me, just watching and seeing. Uh, something's just not quite like it was in Tiger Town. Uh, but Florida State went up to, to Boston College last week in a trap game and did not play very well, but they won. But but uh, Boston College is not Clemson. Yeah, I got you. And, and if I'm not mistaken, you're picking Clemson in a in a close game, correct? Yeah, I'm going okay. with the home home dog, and I'm taking Clemson on money line. And that is, they just I I think they're going to win. I think they're going to beat Florida State. So you you're not just taking the spread; you're taking the pick. Right. I mean, if you like Clemson, mine, you know, plus two. That's too close. I a field goal could change that, and I like I like uh, everybody's been on you know dogging on uh, Clemson, and rightfully so. 
but I think when it comes down to four quarters in Death Valley, I think that it's a different environment, as you said. And I think that uh, this is the second consecutive road game for Florida State. They went all the way up and played in Chestnut Hill uh, in Massachusetts to play Boston College. And then I got to come down to a very hostile environment. And Clemson's starting to find the rhythm. You know, the, after the Duke game, they played two patsies, two cupcakes, but they're starting to find the rhythm. I think it's it's enough to win the fo- uh, win the football game. I, I, my the thing that I have seen, I haven't seen a lot, but but Clemson, where I see the deficiencies compared to the past, is I don't think there's good up front on either side right. of the ball. Now you could talk about right. quarterback, you could talk about receivers, and, and and they don't have they 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 don't have the Deshaun Watsons, and they don't have the the the, the Lawrence, and they don't. This kid's going to be good, but the five kids up front and the front seven on the other side of the ball, to me, they, they lost a lot to graduation, and and they haven't developed what they've got there. It's going to be a close game, and I can see Clemson winning it, but I don't think that Clemson is a national championship caliber football team yet. If they beat Florida State, do they get ranked back in the top ten? No. In the top 10? No. No. Top Absolutely. 20. Come on, man. <laughs> All right. What's next? Bring it up. All right. 330 games. Uh, ranked versus ranked. Marquee games. Number 15, Ole Miss. At number 13, Bama. Whew. Man. First of all, for me, I- I'm different, okay? Mm-hmm. I absolutely – I respect Coach Saban, and and uh, you know again, I, every time people when you mention Alabama to me, uh, I, I I I flash back to the third Saturday in October of two thousand nine, and and uh, the the best football team that day uh, didn't win the football game. And, and and that for me is the parent of the guy that was that played and left everything he had down there in Tuscaloosa, as well as all his teammates. Uh, that that will never leave me. Uh, those block kicks will never ever ever leave me. And that's a joke in our group chat whenever it's talk, we start talking about kickers, and you know the 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 word hate gets thrown around uh uh you know and a lot of things that we can't talk about on here get thrown around but anyway Tuscaloosa is a tough place to play i have a lot of respect for coach saban i love lane kiffin i uh, i love lane kiffin he's he you know forget all the other stuff and dion now has kind of taken that where 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 Lane is not in the spotlight of being that guy that says those things. But he is a football junkie. He is a gym rat. And uh, have you got just about 30 seconds for me to, to tell a story about uh, how how much this guy knows and how much the people that play for him believe in him? Right. Go. Okay. I like So in, in 2009, Tennessee and South Carolina are getting ready to play. We played on Halloween night, the, the black jersey that's out here. The first time that, that, that Tennessee wore black jerseys. And, and Lane almost got fired for that because he wasn't supposed to get the jerseys and he ordered them without telling anybody and put them on after warm-ups. So anyway, we played on Saturday. On Thursday, my phone rang. And, and it was my son, is Jonathan. And Jonathan never talks football with, with me, you know. But he said, hey, Dad. I want you to pay attention. I want to tell you something. He said, no matter what happens Saturday night, no, uh, we're going to score a touchdown on the second play, offensive play that we have. He said, we're going to come out. We're going to go to the line of scrimmage, and I'm going to do this and this and this, and I'm going to send the fullback or, or, or a guy in motion, and, you're, and then we're going to run a, a dive play. We're going to pick up three or four yards. He said, the second play, we're going to get in the huddle. I'm going to break the huddle. We're going to come out. We're going to be in the same formation. I'm going to do the very same thing. We're going to send the guy in motion and watch the center of the field. It's going to open up pre-snap like the parting of the Red Sea. I said, you've lost your mind. 
He said, whether we're on our own two yard line or at the 50 yard line, we're going to score a touchdown because I'm going to do this and this. The guy's going to go. I'm going to do this. I'm going to drop back. I'm going to look to the right. And when I look to the right, my fullback's going to go straight down the seam, right down the hat, uh, right down behind the center, right down the middle of the field. And I'm going to throw it to him. We're going to score. There'll be nobody within 20 yards. He said, you watch and see. I said, well, you've lost your mind. He said, nope, watch and see. Coach Kiffin and I have got this down. And I'm telling you, you will score. So they come out and they did it the first play. And we're sitting in the stands and I look at, at his mom and I said, okay, we'll see. They broke the huddle. They came out. The guy went in motion. And Chuck, you were at the game. Right. Right. But if you go to YouTube and watch South Carolina, Tennessee, 2009, and they've got a camera angle from above, it is just like somebody took a broom and moved everybody from either from from inside the hashes. There was not one South Carolina football player behind the front behind the front four that was in the center of the field. Boom, boom, boom. See, what was it? Sixty something yards touchdown. And if you watch, he's Jonathan's running down the field. Then he stops. He's trying to figure out where his mom and I are sitting, and he's laughing and he's pointing with one hundred ten thousand people. He's pointing at us. And then he points at Coach Kiffin. I say, I say all that to say this guy is a savant. He is an offensive genius. Forget the bluster. Forget the stuff that you hear and the stuff that he says. This guy is a gym rat. And you know that. Right. You know that. You were there in, there in his time at Tennessee. You were there. You This dude is a gym rat. And he loves it and he's dead gum good at it. I believe that this could be the year that an SEC West opponent can go into Tuscaloosa and take them down. And offensively, Ole Miss is good. Now, I, I don't I, you know, I don't know how good they are defensively, but I don't know that Alabama is a offensive juggernaut. And I give a slight edge uh, in the game, I don't know about you're the point spread guy. You, 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 and somebody else that we can't mention anymore. You two are the point spread guys. But in the game, I give a slight edge to to Ole Miss, and I think it's going to be close. And I think they can win at the end in Tuscaloosa. I I, I think giving because Kiffin calls the offense, you have to go against his defensive coordinator, and he's been playing gamesmanship uh, all week long, but. It, it, it's Saban allows his coordinators to go. Kiffin is calling the offensive plays. So yes. as Kiffin, the defensive coordinator and what he can do, Reese is against the defensive coordinator, not against Kiffin because Kiffin, you know, allows the defensive coordinator to do his thing. It's uh, the golden, the one that used to be defensive coordinator for Bama last year. So it's kind of like a homecoming for things. Yeah. So it really, by three thirty, this this to me is the marquee marquee game, uh, and there's several others, but this is this is one of the top games I will be CBS watching. game, huh? It's the CBS game, I would assume. First time last week, I saw uh, Michigan on CBS. I'm like, what's going on here? I thought CBS was strictly for the the SEC. Well, they're getting you know ready because I mean? you know the SEC's leaving and going to. The, oh. They've signed that long term contract. Now, my, just a real short story on that very same play is that um, you had told me about this, and I just listened to it, and I said, okay, we'll see. I'm up in the third row. There's three rows of the press, and my friend at Tri-Cities is at the opposite end. That's the one I almost got kicked out of because he kept yeah, he's afraid of you, Jonathan, the year before. I couldn't help myself. I'm always just a professional guy. But when that play happened, I was standing like this, and all of a sudden I leaped up to my feet, and I was, yeah, good one. Everybody's standing there thinking I'm some kind of spastic thing. I'm trying to get that man's attention. Man, you've been talking about right there. Look at that play. Look at that play. Yeah, baby. <laughs> I had to do it. I'm sorry. Yeah. I had to do it. 
professional. But right. you know, I went to the defense of Jonathan uh, the year before, almost yeah. got kicked out. Anyhow, that's the yeah. mark game at 3.30. There's also uh, – Nope, nope, you hate, nope, 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 nope. Who's, talk about the game. I want you to feel, I want you pick. Uh, I, look, there's, this stuff of oh, dealing with Milrow, the quarterback, it's like, you know, he didn't have a good week and then uh, he won his job back before uh, the sunset on Sunday. Stop. What's going on here? Nobody's covering this. There's a story here. This guy, you know, if you think you're trying, you know, disciplining him or if he had a bad game, then, you know, uh, I'm a little concerned at the fact that why is Tommy Reese a part of pointing to this guy? Because you make it out to be it's Milrose's problem that they lost to Texas. It was not a mill road problem. It was a penalty problem, and it was an offensive line problem for Alabama. But you picked this kid out and punished him, so you say, by well, saying we're sitting him down because they have better weeks. And he did something. No, there's something there. Something but, happened. But period. all that said is that you got mill road back, uh, I think this is going to ramp it up for him, and I think that Bama beats Ole Miss. Bama beats Ole Miss. Okay, close blowout. It's going to be. I think this is going to be a close game. This will be a telling thing for you know. I know Ole Miss can score. Can they score at you know at the pace that they have been doing this season against Bama's defense? There's nothing wrong with Bama's defense. You know, other than penalties. Uh, but I think if Bama gets ahead and roll, you know, starts, it's going to put pressure on Lane to really play catch up. I think at Alabama, I, I think the Crimson Tide win this game. But again, it's a six and a half point favorite for Bama. And I think that's a pretty good line right there. So they, they should win by okay. six. Or seven. Who is the other 330 game? There's two other ones. There's UCLA, number 22 ranked UCLA at number 11 Utah. Okay, let me ask you this. Let me look, look, look. what what where's that at? What channel is that on? What station? That's on probably the Pac-12 network. Okay. Okay. No, uh, listen to me. I'm yeah. going to talk real slow here. Okay. No one is going to watch that football game unless it's a family member of someone on those two teams. All right, then. <laughs> the who, who? 30 game that will compete for viewership and may have more viewers uh, it, watching. It will. Is number 19, Colorado, at number 10, Oregon. And I, I would I, I would say, before, before I talk about the game, Chuck, um, it will beat the CBS game. The ratings, I, it will beat. The CBS game. Well, anyhow, Ole Miss at Alabama and then Colorado at uh, uh, Oregon. Okay, who do you see? Let's talk Colorado, Oregon. Yeah, I, I, UCLA. I just, I'll say this. I know they're playing at Oregon, uh, but I, I don't – man, all the bluster, all the stuff, all the, all the, all the stuff that I thought I would never – think and like to this point i have been so wrong uh he number one he he has hired great football coaches his staff is second to none in this country and that includes alabama uh and that includes georgia that includes anybody else you want to talk about with great staffs and there's great staffs all over but his staff is second to none but the but uh, you know, I can't sit here and tell you what kind of X and O guy he is because I don't know that, but I know this. Every kid in America would probably wants to play for him right now, whether you're an inner city kid from Miami or you're uh, a kid that lives in the mountains of Western North Carolina. If you got a choice, I say that you're probably going to play for him. He, uh, what he's done is it's unbelievable to, to, to this point. And I think they're going to beat Oregon on the road. I agree with you on every point. I think it doesn't matter about – I'm going to add some other things in. I agree Please. all the 
that you just laid out there. Let me add some things to it. They're going to, you know, they are missing Travis Hunter, who got that cheap shot. He had a lacerated liver. He's out anywhere from two to four weeks. He was the number one recruit two years ago and or three years ago, and uh, he is uh, he is both sides of the football. He plays both sides of the football. Yep. D coaches this team during the game. He does not coach and play calls, defense, or anything like that. I don't know who he's talking to on the thing, but he is calm and cool uh, and collective, uh, collected on the sidelines. And all week long, everybody has been talking about this game, and they are – the odds makers in Las Vegas are probably putting out the, the sucker juice – and everybody's drinking that juice. They got Oregon by minus 21. That could possibly happen, but I don't think it is. The fact of the matter is nobody has given Colorado a chance. I learned my lesson game one. If you're not giving Colorado a chance you know, in game four, shame on you. Uh, but I give them that they can play. It's like the stage is not too big for them. Remember when we were talking about it's hard to play back-to-back emotionally charged games? Yes. They, the first game and the second game, they were flat in the first half because that's just as typical. You cannot play three back-to-back games and be charged up. They got charged up for the second half, so against Colorado State. The fact of the matter, they're 3-0. and They're going into Eugene. They're, down, they're an underdog of minus 21 points. I think Colorado is going to win that game because of what they've already established in Boulder, Colorado, a great fan support, but they are good football players. It is nobody from the past regime, nobody from the past program where they were horrible, 87 brand new football players. And they've got around two and three years and minimum college experience. This is this. These are mercenaries playing for Dion. They're mercenaries. I think they beat Colorado. Or yeah, they I, beat Oregon. I, Oregon. I think they stunned. They and, and I will say again, uh, for the first time, and this is not a slight on Ole Miss, this is not a slight on Alabama or the SEC. Don't say bad things about the SEC, Chuck. Okay. You might have, you know, you might have flat tires in the morning, and Jonathan might be driving back from Winston Salem. He takes a really great offense when you mess with the ACC, <laughs> SEC. Uh, I think it's like stealing his breakfast or something. Yeah, he he does not handle it well when you talk about the SEC. That's me poking the bear with Jonathan. <laughs> poke that bear. But, uh, but I would think that that the viewership for Oregon. And uh, Colorado might be double what the Alabama Ole Miss game gets. They were double. They was the most viewed game in, I think, um, uh, in recent memory last week against Colorado State. The yeah, but that, yeah. I mean, I was up at 2.30 in the morning. Right. This is a 3.30 start yeah. Eastern Standard Time. Yeah. Gonna, so, uh, all week long. They've been telling how Oregon's more dominant. Oregon's going to win. Oregon's got this. Oregon's got Bo Nix. Stop right there. Suddenly, Bo Nix is becoming the the big dog and quarterbacks in the nation. No. Who are hearing all this wonderful talk about Oregon? The Oregon players. And who's hearing it also? The Colorado players are hearing this going, oh, wait a minute. So I think it's all – it just plays into a Colorado upset. I don't even know if you'd call it upset because the Vegas guys got it minus 21. Yeah. And if they get it right, hey, more power to them. But I yep. think Who, Colorado's going to win this football. All right, let's go down the list. we got about 15 minutes left. So let's kind of – let's go down the list. Well, the former Clemson quarterback is playing at 7 p.m. Oregon State at Washington State. We don't want to talk about that. 7.30. Hey, Those wait a second. That Oregon State-Washington State game's going to be a good game. Okay. Two pretty good football teams. I just want to say that. I thought you were a typical SEC guy. Didn't want to hear about the Pac-12. No, the pac 12 is the best conference in the nation right now, and then they're dead. Will you make up your mind, please? Well, I, okay. look, Jonathan's at the JV game. He's not listening to you right now. 
It's okay. Okay. It's okay. Uh, hey, can can I stop for a second and tell you yeah. something too? I'm I'm in a story mode tonight. Yeah. So again, we've had our group text. I are we? In, it's like twelve years or something now. This is crazy. So anyway, we were all. I would always joke. I'm gonna go to Mars Hill on Saturday. I love those guys. It's all it's all about. Pull for the line. And, I, and right now, man, I live and die with the Mars Hill Lions on Saturday. Okay. But that was basically my football. That's all I cared about. Didn't give a flip about anything else. So anyway, when this when this happened and and uh and and, and Jonathan was was blessed to 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 get this job. Uh I we were I was joking when God we're back in. But I, you know, but so I showed up. Uh, at the golf course, because on Saturdays out here at Lake June Luska Golf Course, I, I ranger on Sundays, excuse me, on Sundays, uh, I do the marshalling out there. And uh, so I'm out there marshalling one day, and Jonathan had a job for a month or so. And uh, a couple of his coaching staff comes out there. And 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 uh, Branson, Branson Reese goes, hey, David, how you doing? I said, I'm doing well. Yeah, yeah, I'm doing well. And uh, we were talking. And, and the coach that was with him, Austin Chambers, goes, hey, man, what you wearing? I said, what? But, you know, what are you wearing, man? And I had on a red shirt. Okay? <laughs> so, so he kind of looks at me and goes, hmm, we really don't wear red around here like that. I said, okay. I, can't, I get what you're saying. Okay, okay. So – Jonathan had a golf bag and I, and I had bought him and Brian a golf bag for their birthdays. Really nice golf bags. Well, his was red and black. So I get a phone call. Dad, uh, can I come down to the shop after work? I need to talk to you a minute. I said, all right, son. You know, I didn't, he's going to talk about football or dogs or, you know, his mom or his grandmother or his whatever. And he shows up and he's carrying this golf bag and it's empty. And he goes, hey, I need you to trade golf bags with me. I said, what? I need you to trade golf bags with me, man. I, can't, I We went up to Appalachian State to this camp, and we played in the golf tournament, and I got my golf bag out, and I thought Austin was going to have a stroke and die. So the, the well, now I get up in the morning. I'm 61 years old. I got a closet full of clothes. Even if they have a little bit of red on them, I really can't wear those those clothes. And I got stuff like this. This is a this is a PGA Tour golf shirt. See, that's the PGA Tour thing. It's got this on it. It's got and red. I stood, there, I stood there this morning at four forty five in the morning and pondered for fifteen minutes. Can I wear this shirt because it's got the red on it? And and I don't you know because if I go to the grocery store, what if Austin's there? You know, and I like Austin and stuff. So I, I text him today and said, give me a call, man. When you get a chance, just call me for a minute, please. So he calls. He says, how you doing? What's up? I said, man, I just need you to know you're on my list. He said, what? I said, I'm, you're on my list, buddy. I don't, I've got clothes that I love that I don't wear that either that have a red tint to them or they have red on them. And now I basically wear four or five cl- shirts because I don't want to spend any more money, and that's all your fault, you little shit. And he just thought he died laughing. He died laughing. He said, "Man, you have lost your mind." So uh, that that was my that, what, that's my story. There's a little t- there's a little after there's a little after story to that, and that is you and Brett Chapel are best of buds, and Brett bought you all that red clothing, and you have that secret friendly relationship with Brett Chapel at Pisgah. Uh, hey, look, I. I like Brett. I'm, I like honest Brett. to God, I like Brett. We used to spend a lot of time together at the lake when we, you know, Mike Matthews and myself and Janet and him and his wife and his two kids, and they were on one side of the lake, and we'd kind of somehow always see each other, had a good time. And then every once in a while, Jonathan would show up. We'd all have a good time. Uh, I'm not going to stop being his friend. Now I want to beat his teeth in on the 13th. But, but hey, he wants to beat – Jonathan's teeth in, you know, I did, hey, that's what, that's the beauty. Of, I, I, and all, all joking aside, as we start getting ready for the 13th, God, I can't wait. 
It's just, you know, you want to win, but, but it's really, it's really cool when, because people, again, even when I was out that one game, everybody was in, you know, right. Well, I had black and yellow and I had red and black stuff. Well, you got a good looking hat. Well, and I got great hat, but I'm going to tell you, you know, when I was broadcasting, those people over there made sure my wardrobe was black and red. I mean, I got everything the coaches got. I got, you know, jackets and everything like that. Well, and, and I got stuff. I just had to ask. I said, Hey, well, you got one of those. I'll pay for it. And Tuscola gave me the same thing. But I look at my closet and I'm thinking, I can see how that happens. How you just, you know, you, you know, hey, it looks good on you. Janice says that red looks good on you. You have no idea this is going to happen, but you got a closet full of stuff. Although we all know that secret relationship between you and Brett Chapel. So, I mean, you, you won't confess. But that's okay. I love you still. I love you still. You're, you're a good man. You're a good man. You know, you're getting me in trouble right now. You understand that, right? I, I had like three deals worked out to sell cars tomorrow, and now I'm all uh, right you know, here. Uh, okay, it's, we're done. But no, I'll go back to college football. Yeah, let's do that because we got a few minutes. Keep let's t- keep doing college. Okay, uh, Oregon State, Washington State, Cam Ward, and and DJ Ungalia. I can't even say it. DJU uh, are in battle of great quarterbacks, uh, and I think that. Uh, you know, you can always say that Washington State playing at home, but I just think that DJ's out to prove something. He's playing, he's playing well, and I think that Oregon State beats Washington State in Pol- um, Pullman. Yep. Okay. Next. Seven thirty. There's three games or two games, and you got number, uh, you got uh, number six Ohio State at Notre Dame. Number nine. How do you watch a game? That you don't like either one. It's a marquee game, and you hope both lose. Come on now. Yeah, listen, I, I'm not, I'm right there with you. I can't. I, I, I no. The only thing I can root for is that that former Wake Forest quarterback for Notre Dame, the Golden Domers. But I'm not ever rooting for that team from Columbus Penitentiary. I'm not doing it. I'm not ever doing it. So I'm gonna be Notre Dame for about three and a half hours. That's that, hard to do. Then we got uh, number 24, Iowa, at uh, number seven, Penn State. By the way, I don't know who will win that. Notre, I don't have a feel for that Notre Dame-Ohio State game. I really don't. But number 24, Iowa against number seven, Penn State. Remember two weeks ago when you said when Iowa loses, what will happen to them? I said they will go out the top 25. Well, they're at 24. If they lose to Penn State, which I think they will. I, you know, I, I believe they will. Uh, Penn State will be victorious. How many? How many? Uh, uh, how many of the kids uh, this week are, are in the betting scandal in Iowa or Iowa State? Oh, they had more. They had a guy that confessed to it. I'm like, good gracious, man! Hey, speaking of, did Coach Campbell, who who I think's a really good coach at Iowa State, right? And and uh, stayed there when he could have left in the last few years. Did you see what happened after their game uh, the yeah. other night? Did I, did I send that video to you? Yeah, that was at Ohio. That was Ohio. At, you know, that was at Ohio University in Athens, Ohio. You can get lost in that place. That's a place in Ohio that you just, I mean, you better have specific uh, directions. But they were Man, coming. Coach Campbell was going to, to lay a whooping on him, and, and, they, oh. and they, they stopped him. Player, uh, one player and three coaches stopped because he peeled back and was about 10, 15 yards ahead of him when the guy turned around and said, you're on the hot seat. And he had Iowa State garb, and he just didn't like that. He he made that U-turn, and he couldn't get any farther than that. Them coaches no. on him said, no, 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 you can hear him say, no, coach, no, coach. He was going to go after that guy. He was going to go after him. All right. All right, folks, and everybody sitting on, you know, with bated breath and everything, but number 20, Elma College, a Division Three powerhouse at Wittenberg in Ohio. That is, Wittenberg's one of those historic colleges in D- Division Three. You know, other games of Charleston Southern at number 23, ranked in the 1AA poll, Western Carolina University. How about those catamounts? 
how about those cats? That's a two thirty kickoff. If you if you want to get down there uh, to Cullowee and watch the Catamounts play Charleston Southern, you got at four p.m. Tennessee is playing uh, number twenty three. Tennessee is playing UT uh, San Antonio. Seven o'clock, Arkansas at number twelve LSU. That's another good game. That's a blowout. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, this is the section where it's our favorite teams. Um, number six thirty, Georgia Tech at Wake Forest. It's supposed to rain Saturday. Do you know that? It's supposed to rain. Uh-uh. All Atlantic uh, Seaboard. Uh, Georgia Tech uh, is at Wake Forest after Wake Forest has come from behind against the powerhouse Old Dominion. And then at 1030, our guy, our guy up in New Jersey that helped Tuscola out in need and with a care package, John Taylor's uh, Washington Huskies are home against Cal at 1030, and I will be watching that game. I'm going to stay up and watch that. Hey, and let me say this. Out in beautiful Mars Hill, North Carolina, at 1 o'clock, the, the undefeated 2-0 and Mars Hill Lions who have beat two of the – Supposedly, the better teams, they, they opened up with Wingate and then Catawba. And uh, 2-0 and are playing Barton at 1 o'clock on Saturday. They win, If they win Saturday and they're favored, they're going to be nationally ranked. Uh, so, so support the Lions. So support Coach Clifton. Uh, these guys are special. Uh, nothing better than a Saturday in beautiful Mars Hill, I'm telling you. There's, there's, it's just, it's, it's a great environment, a great setting, great football. I get really angry when I hear people say, well, uh, all he could do is go to Mars Hill and play. You get your lazy butt up and go to Mars Hill and play. And let me watch you get your teeth kicked in. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, that's good, um, good, good football. It is. It's college. Yeah. It's the, it's the, you know, better kick you know, talent wise and, and took care of their academics and got into a, a good school. A lot of yeah. people around here graduated from. That's it. So it's not a lot of uh, these coaches. Not a- so, so, yep. So get out there and support the lions too. And, and, uh, uh, I, I just, uh, I hate the fact that, that we're not able to do what we used to do for, for over a decade with them. But, uh, when COVID came, it just changed everything. And, and, uh, just, uh, it, it, so anyway, uh, they're they're playing Barton on Saturday at Mars Hill. Chuck, before we get out of here, we got just a few minutes. Let me get over here to the to the baseball. And the uh, Tampa Bay played today, and uh, they they beat the uh, the the lowly 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 Angels five to four. So uh, Baltimore, who uh, I think that what are we what are the our team here? They're 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 uh, two games up. If they win tonight, if they lose tonight, there'll be a game and a half up, but a big win to put them back two and a half games, and they're zero to zero with uh, Cleveland after five. With uh, nine to play, with nine games to play, nine to games to play. It, it's been fun. I mean, it seemed like just yesterday that uh, we were up there and in in, uh, in placing our uh, our wager on 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 this thing. So that was fun. So so far, it's been good. I got to tell you, I got, we got to be secret about these, our conversations about this because I'm sitting in my chair. I just gotten off talking with you and Angie says, so how much will you and David win if you win this futures bet? I turned, I said about $5,500 and you're going to split that? And I said, 50, 50. So how much do I get? <laughs> I said, well, I'll give you all what you want. <laughs> that's, that's yeah, Janet. Yeah. Yeah. And today, today a little bit ago, hey, she I said, hey, I got to go ahead. No, I just, I was going to go off off topic, but I want to hear what Janet said about this. Oh, thing. no. She, so she goes, she said, I got to get some water for you down here at the shop for the, for the refrigerator for the customers. And then I, mm-hmm. I, I, I said, thank you. She said, I'll go get a case of water. And this is again right before we get on the air, and uh, she she had just said oh, my nails they're expensive to get my nails done. I said I oh, know it's really expensive, and then I hear this oh I can't believe that she she dropped the case of water, her fingernail got ripped off. She comes in here and points her finger at me like this, 
He goes, well, I've got to get them fixed again. So, you know, whatever we win, it's gone. It makes no difference. You could win 50000 We could win $50,000, and I would probably get to keep $20. Twenty dollars. <laughs> well, it's hilarious. So anyhow, but, uh, but anyway, a- uh, I've got a way now. When Chuck sends the information on the Friday night scores, uh, and it's going to have the, the Mountain Seven, it's going to have Western uh, Carolina. If there are some college games, which I think uh, everybody should boycott, you shouldn't play college football on Friday night. Uh, and and he'll have Major League Baseball scores. I now have a way to uh, put those on the Tuscola Football Network. Uh, the second that I get them, I can make sure they get on there. So kind of keep an eye on the Tuscola Football Network. We'll up, update the scores. I'm not going to do a live thing. I'm just going to post them. So you, you're going to have to physically go and click on it, either that and, or it'll go over to my page or it'll go to Crompton's Auto Mart or wherever. But go to Tuscola Football Network, and all the scores from Western North Carolina uh, in, in, will be there. And that'll be like MAC teams, uh, all the Mountain Seven games, uh, any other games of interest in this area that uh, that you're interested in. He, he will uh, Chuck will have the scores, and I'll make sure that they get on the network immediately. Absolutely. So one item before we get off. I yes, wanna- sir is that my former college teammate at Elma College, Tony Anise, is the head coach at the number one ranked Fair State Bulldogs. They've won back-to-back National Division II championships. They went out, a D2 team went out to play Montana, a Division I AA team. Final score was 14-10. to 10. And they lost. But they won 14, you know, they, uh, they, it was a tight game against a one double eight team. So, you know, the, and for the people I mentioned, Elma College, a division three school, if kids really want to go play, we, David and I and Jonathan, we can show you a wonderful world outside the realms of Canton and Haywood County. If you open eyes, we can get you places and see sites and be around and you would get to play college football and, and I, it's not always and you, you're so right chuck is so right listen to what he's saying and and listen it doesn't have to be the cbs game you don't have to play there you don't have to play at those levels man just go play if you want to play find a place that's a great fit for you football academically socially and go, and go experience it and uh you know that's for both. That, that's well said. County schools, Tuscola and Pisca. I can. We can show you. Coaches can call us. You know, say, look, I got a kid that's this, this, and this. Man, we can get you. But you know, our connections are out. But it's not. You know, David's got Mars Hill, and so are all the coaches. But I mean, outside the realms, right in Michigan, I've got the, the two-time defending national champion, Fair State. And I've got my alma mater who is rising, made the second round of the postseason, and then turn around is ranked twentieth now, and looks like they're on the road for another undefeated regular season. I'm telling you, it's it is it's so wonderful that uh, to, you know don't just look close to home. There's a world outside there, and it's a magnificent world. It and is play- a magnificent world. I always thought on Saturdays, I'm playing college football. I'm, I mean, that's, you know, and every Saturday I got to go to the next level. I was a late bloomer, but Hey, the thing is, is that I would never have left Elma college. And so we could pick a phone up and we can, we can turn you on to this and we can get the coaches on them. If you got a player that really seriously wants to look yeah. beyond the mountains. We know people we had, like Janet says to me, you have people, David, you have people. We so know we, we have people, but anyway, thank everybody tonight. Chuck, thank you. Uh, get out early tomorrow. Please come out and support the football team. Uh, they're going to need everything that they can get. Uh, so we'll see everybody at Franklin tomorrow. Then we'll see you Saturday morning uh, with the Jonathan Crompton show. And we'll uh, hopefully report on a victory, but you know, win, lose or draw. 
We'll be there to talk about it. Chuck, have a great night. Go Orioles. Go Orioles. We'll see everybody later. Have a great evening. Thank you, guys.